Mark my words, this is gonna be the exact kit I'm gonna use to take Cisco down. What's going on, Mail Gang? It's Boaz here, and for today's episode of Tactical Gear Hits, I'm gonna be going over my loadout that I'm gonna be using to take Cisco down on PV Wars Coastal Front. Starting off in Tactical Gear Heads fashion, we're gonna be starting off with my headgear. First thing you'll notice, I am not running a helmet. And that's just because as a Robo Commander, I just feel that a helmet is just not a vibe for this kind of environment. So I just decided to leave the helmet at home. Instead, I'm gonna be running this athletic elastic style headband around my head to collect any kind of sweat, especially when I'm running around on the field. And uh, if you look at my iPro, I'm gonna be running the ASG Strike Tactical Dual Pane Goggles. It doesn't get in the way when you're aiming down your sights. And also, because of the dual pane technology, it just doesn't really fog up. So as long as I'm getting some kind of airflow in, if I'm moving around, it just doesn't fog up at all. Next up is my ear protection. Now I know some of you guys might think that wearing ear protection while playing airsoft is a bit overkill, and I would agree with you, but just getting shot in the ears just really sucks. These are my Real Steel Telltale Range Guard headsets. Again, I use this when I go to the range and shoot real guns. It does have a aux cable plug here on the headset so that way I can connect it to my overall radio setup. So that way, if I'm doing any kind of admin work through the radio and communicating with the other admins on the field, you know, all the other players don't have to hear all that nonsense. Finally, for the last pieces of my headgear, I am running my Korean Tokibi style face wrap. It just holds in place my mesh mouth guard that I'm using. I did make a tutorial just like how I roasted Isaiah about it. So having something low profile like this really helps. Next up, you're talking about my play carrier setup. You guys have probably seen me wear this play carrier several times, whether it's in our marketing photos or separate videos. And that's just because I'm at a point in the hobby right now where I'm trying to merge uh, the real steel shooting side of my hobby with the airsoft side. So I'm just trying to consolidate all my kit into one nice, neat package. So what I'm wearing right now is the Ferro Concept Slickster. It's probably one of my favorite play carriers out there on the market right now just because it's nice and minimalistic, but you can also scale it up for more gear, more stuff that you can carry around for larger airsoft events. I'm carrying four magazine pouches on the front, so that way I'll just carry that extra bit of ammo on me. And on the front, I've attached this zip up admin pouch to where I can store any of my personal items. Usually I keep a speed loader on me uh, and a notepad so that way I can write down any notes I need to on the field. Just like Isaiah's, I am also a FUPA pouch supremacist as well. This is not storage space at all. This is actually containing a first aid kit, you know, especially if you're out on the range shooting real guns, it can be dangerous. So having some kind of medical supplies is important. Next up on my play carrier setup is going to be my radio pouch containing my Bailfang radio that I routed to an antenna relocation kit with the whip antenna on the back and connected to a shoulder mic that again, I route into my headphones. So it's a, it's a whole setup. Again, it's gonna be used more for admin purposes for BB Wars, so that way we could control the flow of the game to make sure it's fun and safe for everybody. One thing you're gonna notice about my play cure system is that I'm not running any kind of hydration system, and that's on purpose. Now, when it comes to airsoft, especially for playing hard, I strongly believe that you should hydrate. However, I do not think that hydrating while you play is a good idea. Uh, for me, I cramp a lot if I drink while I run. So I highly recommend for all players, whether you're new or experienced, make sure to hydrate the night or the day before of the event. If you are trying to drink water during the event, it is too late and you're gonna suffer some pretty bad dehydration consequences. The next piece of kit on me is going to be my battle belt setup. This is again, a part of my real steel shooting kit that I'm merging with my airsoft kit. So this is the Ronin Tactics shooter belt. This is a pretty expensive belt to get into, honestly. However, I personally think it's really worth it. It's probably the last belt I will ever own. On my belt, I'm gonna have two Lancer Tactical soft shell pistol magazine pouches. I just love these so much just because they're not only affordable, but they do come with the belt mounting clips out of the packaging, which is fantastic. But also they fit a wide variety of pistol magazines. Next to that, are going to be two HSGI rifle taco magazine pouches. They're just such a timeless rifle pouch. Like you can run any kind of rifle magazine on the taco and it'll fit it no problem. On the rear of my belt, I am running a Vism micro roll up dump pouch. I just love that pouch so much just because of how compact it rolls up. And also when you do deploy it, it does give you a good amount of dump pouch space. The last two pieces of my battle belt are going to be the Safari Land QLS holster system mounted to a Bravo high capo holster for a TLR1 and glove clips. You can get them for like five bucks on Amazon and they hold your gloves for you. It just makes your life so much easier. 
On my hands, I'm running the Mechanics 0.5 millimeter gloves. Now these are nice and thin, so I love the dexterity that you get out of it, but it does sacrifice a lot of that protective padding. So getting shot on the hand will suck more than running traditional Mechanics gloves, but I just love the way that they feel and fit in my hands. So I'm definitely aiming for your hands. What, why do you have to be this way, man? Like, I, I was gonna try to be courteous to you and shoot you in the body armor where you're protected the most, you're gonna shoot me in the hands? Is that really what it's down to? Hey man, all's fair in love and war. This is not war, we're just playing airsoft, bro. Hey there, B-Roll Boaz here. Just wanted to quickly remind you to please bring a dead rag to the event. It will greatly help you, especially when you are walking off the field when you are dead. I know Isaiah and Lancer Tactical David have not mentioned it, so I'm really hoping that they see this and bring a dead rag, because you guys will probably really want one. All right, let's talk about the gun I'm gonna be using. The primary that I'm gonna be running at BB Wars Coastal Front is going to be the KWA Eve 9. Now, full disclosure, KWA has sent this gun over to me. They were very generous in doing so, and I gave it the Boaz treatment. I swapped this out with a KWA Eve 4 PDW stock instead. I just love the way it looks. Moving towards the front here, I do have a Lancer Tactical Mock Suppressor, and it is running a longer unicorn inner barrel, so that way I can get out to distance and shoot people from farther away accurately, specifically Cisco, because I know he's gonna be hiding somewhere. Up front, I do have an Osman 800 lumen flashlight. It does get the job done, and I like how it does come with the pressure switch out of the box, which is great. It's mounted to a thorn tail style mount just to push the flashlight a bit more forward so you don't get as much of a mock suppressor shadow on it when you're using the light. And on the top, I had the very new, very tasty FMA Engol laser. Now, it doesn't really serve much of a function outside of looks. I just think it looks absolutely sick. It just gives it a little bit more of a milsim look and feel. Next thing on the gun is gonna be the KWR original vertical foregrip that they give you out of the box. And I went ahead and chopped it down a little bit over halfway. Uh, just because I wanted it to be more of kind of like a hand stop. Where I'm able to on the handguard, I am running the new PTS M-Lock rail covers. I just think they look so clean and elegant on the gun. I just love that square pattern texturing that they add to it. It matches perfectly with the KWA foregrip. On the receiver of the EVE 9, I am running a PTS Unity riser for airsoft holographic sights. I just love the way it bumps up the profile of your airsoft holographic sight, and it just keeps your head at a nice natural position when you're shooting. Aside from the inner barrel and bucking, everything about the EVE 9 is completely stock. I haven't done any kind of internal modification. That's just because I say time and time again, KDWA makes some of the most solid internal components in the airsoft market. So it doesn't have any kind of MOSFET or any kind of electronic control system, uh, but it can handle an 11 one light bulb perfectly fine. And that's just the way I like it. Bro, you are such a shill. Hey man, are you telling me you don't unironically love KDWA? I mean, I do, but dang. Hey, come here. How, how else am I gonna get free KDWA stuff? True. Based on the choice of holster I have made for my battle belt, you're probably already guessing what kind of secondary I'm gonna be running at BB Wars. And that's going to be the Army Armament 612M High Kappa. Not gonna lie to you guys, as soon as our review for the Army Armament 612M dropped on YouTube channel, I went ahead and just picked this bad boy up because you know, as an airsoft collector, you gotta have eye cap, and this is something that I've never really had. So I went ahead and I fixed that issue. I just love the way that it feels in the hands and also the way it shoots. It's one of the very few airsoft pistols that come with a reinforced recoil spring out of the box to handle the extra weight of a uh, red dot sight. So on the top here, on the included red dot sight mount, I have mounted on a SIG Air Romeo pistol red dot sight. It's just a nice quality airsoft optic that I've beaten up to hell and back. On the bottom reel section, I have mounted my real stream light TLR1 flashlight. It's a super bright flashlight and it really helps, especially in low light TKB environments. And it fits the Bravo holster perfectly. One thing I will say, it just feels so good in the hands, especially the way that they hand stippled the grip. I mean, it just grabs onto you and it speaks to you. Isaiah, this pistol speaks to you. What is it saying? Get one. Okay. For my shirt, I'm gonna be wearing the Condor short sleeve combat top in black. For Rebels, for BB Wars, uh, Rebels are not allowed to wear any kind of camo clothing, so any kind of solid color or any other plain civilian style clothing is required. For my pants, I'm just gonna be running regular plain Jane blue jeans, but I just love running denim with tactical gear. You know, denim should just be a tactical color, like cry precision. Someone, please make some tactical denim pants. I mean, uh, that, that just sounds kind of disgusting, but please, please just cry knee pads on jeans. It'll be so sick. 
for my footwear, I'm gonna be running the Maritime Tactical Assault shoes. I just love how rugged and durable they are. They're very lightweight, very breathable, gives you good ankle support and has really good tread on them. I would highly recommend it for anyone who doesn't really want to run heavy combat boots and they look like Converse shoes, which is kind of Gucci. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and checking out my tactical gear heads for BB Wars Coastal Front. And as your Rebel Commander, I'm calling on all Rebels to join forces with me to take Cisco down at US Airsoft Fields on April 22nd. If you are interested in BB Wars but haven't gotten your ticket yet, please make sure to do so as soon as possible because they are selling out fast. And hopefully in the near future, we'll be able to host more BB Wars events in California because I know a lot of you guys have been asking for that for a while now. But if you like what you see, please make sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon to get notified of every time you upload a new video. If you'd like to help keep the lights on and that camera rolling, please make sure to stop by Airsoft GI for all your Airsoft needs. This is Boaz. We'll see you out on the field.